All right, welcome back. So the next thing we want to do is we want to machine these two grooves right here. So anything in a lathe part, in a turning part that is indented like that, okay, we call these grooves. Because the roughing and finishing operation, as you see, they machine in straight lines. So obviously, they're not going to be able to machine these little pockets. So any pocket type like uh, shapes are called grooves in uh, Mastercam, and we call them the groove toolpath as well, okay? So let's get started with that. So come over here under toolpath and select the groove feature. All right, so now you have a few options. The first one being a point where you can select the point right here, for example, where you want to start your operation. There's two points. You can select a top right and a bottom left point. Three lines where you can select one, two, and three lines uh, to be guided. A chain where you can just select the beginning and the end of that chain, and that would count as one chain. And multi-chain, where you can basically select two chains at the same time. And that's exactly what we're doing. We have two chains right here. So go ahead and select multi-chains and select OK. And now what you want to do is you want to select the beginning of this line and the beginning of this line. And that basically starts it off right here and ends it right here. You want to make sure your green arrow starts here and red arrow ends here. And next, we want to start right here, and we want to end it right here. So start out in this line, and remember, you want to click on the beginning edge of the line, not towards the end, otherwise the toolpath will be reversed. For example, we'll be going this way. All right, so I'm going to put it back that, that way. So we've selected two chains. That's what we call multi-chain. So now Mastercam will actually machine two pockets at the same time. So go ahead and select OK. And we're going to keep it at OD Groove Center Tool selected, okay? And we're going to call this Groove Operation, okay? Now, we're going to go to Groove Shape Parameter. So this is where you can tell it how you want the groove angle to come in at. So we're going to keep this at 90 degrees for the angle. And you can change it for the OD. If you're machining an ID, it flips around. A face will go sideways because it has to machine a face this way. You can do a back. So the back side of it as well. You can also plunge in, but you have to select a plunge uh, direction. I'm going to press escape to get out of that. And you can also do a floor, but you have to select the floor as well. I'm going to exit out of this. So make sure it's on OD. You want it to be machine the OD, straight down on the OD. And use stock for outer boundary. So it's machining from the top of the stock to the part. Okay. So now we're going to go to groove rough parameters. So there's also an extend groove to stock parallel to groove angle which is exactly what you want you can also use tangent to a groove walls but we're going to keep it at groove angles for now and always use the graphical interfaces that are alongside here so you know what they're trying to do you can also adjust the start of the contour as well as the end of the contour by selecting this and then you can extend that if you like as well and you can also uh you can always select this all you have to do is check the check mark and this box opens up automatically for you. You can extend the contour, the beginning of where you want it to plunge into, and uh, the, how you want it to end, how you want it to exit. We're going to keep those unchecked for now, so keep those unchecked. Now let's go to Groove Rough Parameters. So under Rough Parameters, this is the clearance height. So clearance height being 0 0.05, it's fine. Okay, so this is going to be above your stock, 50 thou, and that's fine. So now for the rough step. So every time it steps over from the rough, we want to go 75% of the tool. So if you just go percent of the tool width, it automatically puts in 75%. And back off, how much you want it to back off? I usually like to have it back off 25% every time it steps in, backs off 25%, and then steps in again, backs off 25%, comes back out, and steps in 75%. So every time it steps in for a new tool path, it will use 75% of the tool. Every time it backs off, it only backs off 25% of the tool diameter. All right. So we want to leave 5 thou in X and 5 thou in Z. Okay. So we're going to leave those because we're going to actually uh, finish the operation in the last tab over here. So this is the stock we're going to use to rough until we have 5 thou left on both the wall and the Z. So there's over here also on the side, there's groove walls. Now you can leave it at steps or you can leave it at smooth. I like to have it where it machines my wall smooth, but we can leave it as steps if you, in case you want to see it step down each time uh, in the roughing operation, or you can have it run a smooth one. Now, 
the faster method of doing that is to have it on steps this way you don't waste a lot of time trying to uh, get a smooth finish in your roughing operation it doesn't really make sense to do that but a lot of people like to do that so that's why there's two those two options but i'd like to keep it as steps so we can save some time during my machining operation there's a dwell time over here this is how much you want, want it to for example if you want it to come in and dwell for a little bit and then come out okay and the reason why you would want to have it dwell somewhere is you know just to clear any chips while the part is turning you would probably clear that area of any chips it's usually meant for any uh you know corners or radiuses like that uh where you would have it dwell just for a little bit so it clears the chips all right so there's also a first plunge feed rate where you can actually check out the feed rate i'm actually going to leave this at the default plunge value uh you can also have it retract so as it's plunging and retracting you can change the feed rates to whatever you want it to be there's also retraction moves you can have a rapid retract or retract with a certain feed rate the rapid retract is what i would recommend you just want it to rapidly come out of there you don't care you don't need it to come out slowly and waste your time just have it come out retract fast and then when it's coming in it will come in regular machining speed okay so now uh for the cut direction uh there's few options there's positive which is going from left to right negative from right to left bi-directional it'll go in the middle and it'll just keep going left and right until it finishes your part and then there's chain direction so whatever the uh, direction you have your chain set up at is what you would do from left to right for example so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it at bi-direction okay and let's go ahead and go to the groove finish parameters first you want to have uh, the finish checked just like you have in the groove rough parameters you want to make sure that the rough is checked you don't want to have finish each groove before roughing if you have this check what it will do is it will machine this pocket and th then finish it and then machine this pocket and then finish it but what i want to do is i want it to rough both pockets and then finish both pockets i don't want it to have change the tool twice you know it'll go roughing tool finishing tool roughing tool finishing tool that doesn't make sense for me i need to make sure that it's only roughing here and it's only finishing here all right so come over here you will only want one finish path the finish step over it's going to be 10 thou leave it at that you don't want to leave any material in the z and x so make sure they're at zero for the direction we'll keep it at clockwise okay for the retraction uh, movement keep it at rapid corner dwell we're not dwelling so just keep it at none again dwelling is used to clear out chips and stuff like that we're going to leave this off for all of our exercises because there's no way for you to really see it uh, unless we uh, put in a long dwell time but i don't believe it shows it in master cam all right so overlap you want a middle overlap and we'll keep this at zero the overlap at zero but it's a good idea to just have a small overlap so the toolpath so that both of them are overlapping each other a little bit as it's going machining left and right so you don't have any burrs at the bottom now one important aspect is you want to go to the lead in all right so you want this tool to be coming in straight down and straight up so for for the uh, straight down for the lead in and for the second pass lead in so there's first and second pass so for the first pass you want it to be straight down so just click here so if you actually click anywhere on the clock it will move it you want to click straight down where it says negative 90 and then second pass lead in you also want it at negative 90. all right so select okay and this is it and then select okay over here and master camel machine your part it looks good to me let's go ahead and verify that in the simulation so i'm going to select all my tool, tool toolpath group and select verify operation all right i'm going to zoom out real quick so it's going to play out my first operation i'm going to just fast forward my first operation my second operation and i'm going to slow it down now for the last one so this is my last operation play it out it's going to go down it's going to machine a little by little see how it's going back and forth that's by direction it's going to start right in the middle of the groove and it'll start going back and forth so now it's coming into the finished pass there you go cleans it up nicely for you and there is the final finish pass for the left groove pocket and there you go looks good now if there for any reason you don't want to see all of these toolpaths for example say it's getting crowded you don't want to see the toolpath for uh lathe and fizz so you what you want to do is select both of them by holding shift and selecting the other so have one selected hold shift and select the other and then what you want to do is hold control and hit t and that will make those two toolpath 
disappears. So you only see right now over here the toolpath for the last one, which is the groove. All right, so this concludes this session. In our next session, we're going to finish off the top edges of our part because we left 10th out over here. So we need to get it nice and clean.